Body Shops, Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, Mr. Larry Smith, and our Art Committee Chairman. <laughs> Vice President, American Aero Corporation, Clawson, Michigan, Mr. Dan Summer. <laughs> Former President, Mercedes-Benz, Advanced Design of North America from Irvine, California, Gerhard Steinle. Vice President of Design Ford Motor Company, Dearborn, Michigan, Mr. Jack Telnack. <laughs> Proprietor of the Queen's Toy Box in Lyle, Illinois, Bob Wilson. <laughs> General Motors Vice President, General Manager, the Delphi Energy Group from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, Mr. Don Runkel. Richard Wilson. Where is he? Richard Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to save our chief judge till last, and I'd like to introduce to you to him at this time, Vice Chairman of Chrysler Corporation, our chief judge, Mr. Bob Lutz. And those are our judges for 1997. Is that a distinguished group? Thank you, gentlemen. Our distinguished 1997 judges. And Mr. Lutz, if you'd say a word or two about the Concord judging that we do here at Meadowbrook that would be appreciated by all. Thank you. Um, you should know that uh, unlike many other Concorde d'Elegance where uh, you judge purely the quality of the restoration and um, whether the whether nuts that were originally not chrome-plated are now erroneously chrome-plated or whether suspension parts that used to be painted black are now painted in a glossy gray and points are deducted and so forth. This is not this kind of show. Um, what, but this is a show that is supposed to measure primarily the elegance of the design, uh, the daring of the designer, uh, whether the car broke new ground or not, and of course, whether or not the designers did a good job with what they had. Uh, so you may see some cars winning here. I mean, all the cars are beautiful, but you may see some cars out there that are absolutely spectacular in their condition with beautiful leather paint, chrome, and so forth. Uh, but it may never have been, it may have been ugly the day it was made ugly the day it was restored, and still ugly today. <laughs> and so no matter how perfectly restored it is, it probably won't get a prize at this show because this is a very design-oriented show. And a, a very old car that's supremely elegant, that has been well-maintained, that may have a few cracks in the paint and uh, slightly wrinkly leather, well, it can win a prize. We just wanted you to know that so that you know that uh, surface perfection uh, it helps but it's not the primary purpose in this show thank you very much thank you bob lutz our chief judge and vice chairman of chrysler corporation thank you to all our judges gentlemen wonderful job it was difficult with all those marvelous cars on the field but we'll be announcing your results as the show goes on thank you A lot of work and effort has gone into okay, Class C drivers to your cars, please. Class C drivers to your cars. This is Class A, ladies and gentlemen. Our first awards to winners in Class A. Antique and vintage through 1924. 19 cars in the class, six trophies, plus one best antique and vintage through 1924. And our first prize winner of the day is a 1914 Stearns Knight Turing, owned by Patterson Barnes from Willoughby, Ohio. And presenting the trophy is Mr. Ken Gooding. Magnificent Stearns Knight Turing. Grant. Okay, I remember you were here two or three years ago, and your grandfather was? Frank Stearns who built the Stearns Knight automobile. And this is Ann Barnes in the back seat, riding in a Stearns Knight automobile. Ann, tell us a little about your grandfather. Well, he was a terrific man, way ahead of his time. And it's just such a pleasure that we have been able to bring three Stearns 
to the Concords over the years, and this is a, a terrific pleasure for us today. To You've written in every one of them. <laughs> yes, I certainly have. I'm sure it is. It must be nice to have an automobile uh, manufacturer in the family. It certainly is. It's so terrific. And we're very proud, and our children are very proud of their heritage. Thank you. Ann Barnes, an outstanding automobile. Will there be another Stearns up here eventually? hope so. Good. We do too. Thank you. Ann Barnes in the back seat to receive the trophy. Her grandfather was Mr. Stearns and this magnificent 14 Stearns night touring Patterson Barnes from Willoughby, Ohio. Well, this, is a Will this is a night sleeve valve engine. That's why it's smoking. Just tell us just a brief bit about how that worked. Well, Knight developed the engine in uh, two sleeves that go up and down to create the valve effect and Stearns was the first American manufacturer to sign a license agreement with Knight. I've heard if a Knight design engine isn't smoking, it's not running right. That's correct. Thank you very much. From the Barnes family, ladies and gentlemen, in Willoughby, Ohio, a 14 Stearns Knight. This has a sleeve valve Knight engine in it. And Mrs. Barnes in the back seat, granddaughter of Mr. Stearns. What a beautifully restored automobile. Rear-mounted spares and those Westinghouse shocks, front and back. Our second winner in Class A, a 1913 Hudson Speedster, Carl Segrin from Shoreview, Minnesota. Dwayne Miller presenting the trophy. Congratulations, Carl. This is a real beauty. I bet it's fast. It is. <laughs> so it's going to be a little scary. I hope it can stop. The brakes, we got two rear. As long as it goes. Thank, thank you, Dwayne. Carl, is this a recent restoration? We just got done Friday about 2 o'clock. Oh, that's recent. We've got a couple more recent than that one, too. The, the paint sticky. Uh, excuse me? It is, yeah. Don't like it. How, how, long did, how long did it take to do the car? About two and three years, three quarter years. And this is a rare one. Is there another one like it? We hear there's an ever in pieces somewhere, but uh, we don't know if it's true. We haven't been able to find anything out on that. How long did it take you to get this one back together? Two and three quarter years. And the uh, engine is? Uh, six cylinder, uh, 654, uh, 421 cubic inches. Um, is this the mile a minute Hudson? No, that was the 1912 mile a minute. Two miles in a minute. This one's really fast. Only a windshield for the driver. It's an outstanding restoration. Finished Friday, ladies and gentlemen. A six-cylinder engine. A rare one-of-a-kind 1913 Hudson Speedster from Shoreview, Minnesota, Carl Cedergren. Dual rear-mounted spares. Now there's a man's car. Right-hand drive. Thanks, Carl. Congratulations. Our third winner in Antique and Vintage, a 1909 Renault Victoria. Arthur During from Elto, Michigan, and Ken Gooding to present this trophy. Here's a magnificent automobile. Big, rare, desirable Renault. Arthur, here's your trophy. We really appreciate you bringing it. It's very elegant. Thank you, Ken. It is elegant indeed, Arthur. What's the history on this car? Well, it came out of Detroit, and a fellow had it there for numerous years, almost 20 years. And they were trying to sell it to me all the time, and finally I bought it. And uh, we stored it, and John here did the restoration on it. And this has a Brewster body, which is unusual. Custom Brewster body with a Cape Victoria rear, and I see two jump seats. Uh, Oh yes, it has an oiling, uh, a visual oiling display. You can see the oil dripping down, and that means it's working to all parts of the car. Yeah, first three for the motor, uh, uh, transmission, and rear end. Flow, and we only use the oil once. It goes down onto the pavement. <laughs> you don't have to worry about oil changes. We oil the road for you. Put it in, goes through the engine, and out on the road. That's right. Uh, there certainly can't be another one like this in existence with a custom body. I don't think so. And this is unusual, these little windows here. Have sight, a sight gauge and sight windows through the dashboard. The blind spot for me over there and the footman can look over through this one for the blind spot on this side. Art, what would this car have cost new in 1909? Don't 
And we have the radiator back here behind the engine right up against the firewall instead of being out front. That was a Renault trademark. Yes, all Renaults were that way. Your air came up over that hood. That's a Renault style hood which was copied by a lot of American cars. Use that style. Chain drive? No, this is a shack drive. Four-speed four speed transmission. Four-speed, four in the floor. Four forward. Thank you, Art. Art During with his magnificent 1909 Renault. Look at those brass headlights and the radiator mounted behind the engine. A special Cape Victoria. Name of that body style, a rare 1909 Renault. Where, where are you going? Back. Our next winner in this class would normally be a 1902 Westfield rear entrance Tanu owned by Robert Lester of Solon, Ohio. He is uh, scheduled to be, but they can't get the car started at the moment. So uh, we'll bring it up later as soon as it is running and we'll make certain that he gets the trophy. So we're going to go on to the 1910 Stoddard Dayton Victoria owned by Dale Lyons from Dwajiak, Michigan. A Stoddard Dayton 1910 and Dwayne Miller to present the trophy. Congratulations Dale and Mrs. Lyons, beautiful car. The interior is spectacular. I wish everybody could see it. Yes, I wish I wish our audience could see the interiors of these cars. And Mrs. Lyons, you're in period costume. Yes, I am. I'm in 1910. I have my parasol for when I go walking around in the sun. Very, very nice. I noticed you have a wonderful outfit on, and that's authentic for 1909? Absolutely. 1910, yes. And Dale? There's no windshield here. You've got a Cape Victoria under it. Tell us about this uh, style. Well, it, this was a custom-built job by Deniston, built on the Stoddard Dayton H chassis, and allegedly it was, it was built in Buffalo, New York, and allegedly for the Goodyear family. But I can't uh, get. I would. Are you riding on Goodyears? No, <laughs> Goodrich. <laughs> <laughs> okay, magnificent car. What about the engine, Dale? It, it has a. Uh, Four-cylinder, single cam, uh, engine, a Hemi, and it's uh, just a neat little driving car. No, but the first the first race of Indianapolis in 1909 was a short race. It was like a 25-mile sprint, and it was won by a strip chassis of the same model car, Stoddard Dayton Model H. So, so it has a racing heritage. Great, it's magnificent, Dale. Thank you very much. And the steering wheel over on the right-hand side as many early American cars did. Yes, Dale said he feels like a horse with blinders. He can't see anything to either side. He can just see straight ahead and there's no windshield. Dale Lyons from Dwajak, Michigan. Their 1910 Stoddard Dayton and their son Don in the uh, mother-in-law seat. That's where the mother-in-law rode. <laughs> 